is like the third take where I've been trying to start this thing and I'm just going with it. Tabbing over, we're going to start what is now going to be the fourth module in my uh, Robust Tools class and what I want to talk about today is, if I can get into the correct app, hey! Uh, what I want to talk about today is uh, making a website using Blogdown and GitHub. So the idea is we're going to try and cover some practical tools that you might actually want to use in real life. Um, not that the previous things have not been practical, but say dplyr and data visualization are classic data analysis tasks. Creating websites, on the other hand, is not something that we think of as part of a a data analysis job or a psychologist's job, but in practice we often find ourselves having to publish things on the web or promote ourselves to the world and so on. So I'm actually going to go through the process of how you would set such a thing up for yourself and in the process I'm going to teach a few things associated with using GitHub, using Blogdown and um, <coughs> under the hood I'm going to teach you a lot of stuff about R Markdown. These are really useful skills for everyday life, like R Markdown in particular is just one of those things that if you are in the R ecosystem, if that's the framework you're going to use to do data science or any kind of research enterprise, R Markdown is worth knowing. So that's the goal here and we'll see how this goes. Alright, to get started uh, I, I'm going to start by talking about GitHub. Um, GitHub is an extremely useful website um, and it is powered by the most obnoxious tool I have ever come across in all my life and that is including my high school bullies. <laughs> I'm in the weirdest mood today. Okay, um, so we're going to go to github.com and we're going to set up with an account. So the idea here is I'm assuming you've got absolutely no familiarity with GitHub at all and even less familiarity with Git. So Git is the underlying software that we use to organize code and to uh, do things like version control to make sure that, you know, let's say if I'm making a bunch of changes and then I think, oh no, I need something I did two months ago, I realize I've gone down the garden path, I can rewind, go back in time, find earlier copies of things and so on. Um, so Git is really, really useful in practice for all those sorts of things, but in this initial period we're just going to do the very very basics of getting started and we're going to do that using GitHub which is the website which is based on Git um, which <coughs> excuse me a website that uh, people who program used to share and collaborate on code and so part of the reason for trying to do it this way is that it's actually a little bit more fun or at least slightly less painful if you just start out by going, oh, I will use GitHub as a sharing resource rather than start with the really, really painful Git stuff. So I'm going to sweep the ugly things under the hood and get us started. So okay, I spend a lot of my time on GitHub. Um, so this is me on GitHub. I am uh, DJ Navarro on GitHub. Um, and what you can see from all of those little, all that green table stuff there, I actually spend way, way too much time on GitHub. Um, it's super useful for me in my everyday life. For the purposes of this little tutorial, I will also be Stringer Bell on GitHub. And Stringer Bell has just joined. She doesn't have any resources and she's done nothing. Um, she's a complete newbie. So we're going to assume that Stringer Bell is, is you. And we're going to get you started using some resources that I, as DJ Navarro, this is becoming weird, uh, have created. So this is kind of, this is essentially how it works. All right, so as Stringer Bell, I go, oh, I was just browsing and I found a code repository of yours and it looks really good and I want to use it. Oh, cool, which one? Oh, well, it's this one here. It's that DJ Navarro slash new blog. Um, go, oh, cool, well, you're always welcome to create your own fork of my repo or you can use it as a template for one of your own. Forking and templates, I'm going to start giving you some terminology, are two slightly different usages. Most of the time when you are creating things on GitHub, you'll probably be creating forks, but I'm going to use templates today. Don't worry, 
too much about that just yet. Okay, so Stringer Bell being the complete newbie with no idea what's going on whatsoever, it's like, well, how do I do this? And step one is to go to uh, the repository, sign up for an account on GitHub, and uh, we're going to create it from a template. And then we're going to put it onto our Studio Cloud. So I'd better show you how to do this. Okay, so step one. Um, step one is actually me going, click on the link and go, look over here on GitHub. So this is github.com slash DJ Navarro slash new blog. And that's what I want to use as a template. But at the moment I'm logged in over here, you can see as DJ Navarro. So I'll just sign out. Okay. And this is the kind of thing you'd be presented with when you were signing up. So typically you would, you know, create your own username, email address, you know the deal, uh, sign up for a site. What I will do instead, because I've done it before, I'll just sign in as Stringer Bell um, and be interested to know if this has saved my password correctly. It has. Okay. So Stringer Bell has nothing on her account. Um, so this is what she sees when she logs in. If we go over here and just sort of click on her profile and she has, okay. So one contribution in the last year, that's because I was stuffing around with this account last night, but you would have nothing probably. So, okay, I've added an avatar over here and this is going to be Stringer Bell. She's got the weird cloud of funny looking shapes. I don't know, confetti is obviously what it is. Okay, so now let's say for like Stringer Bell's going around on Twitter and goes, oh cool, you've got this uh, really neat uh, blog. So we'll go DJ Navarro slash um, none of these other things that I've done before. Oh look, there's our we're all living in times of terror. Um, so let's go to her new blog. Right? Uh, she's so now um, this is roughly what uh, well, this is what you would see. This is what Stringer Bell sees. So let's just tab. Sorry. I remember my things. Okay, so this is what we're looking at, right? Um, I am Stringer Bell is logged in, and if I wanted to, as Stringer Bell, I could create a forked copy of this repository. What that means is that I would have my own copy of DJ Navarro's uh, wonderful software, which you'll have a chance to use in a moment, um, and uh, but my my copy as Stringer Bell will be tied to DJ Navarro's copy. So we could alternatively over here um, create, use it as a template and Chris press that green button there um, and that creates a completely independent copy which is just saying okay I'm going to create a new repository and it's going to have um, the same files that DJ Navarro has in her handy little repository which hopefully will be there will help us set up a website. Okay, then you'll notice little things over here like uh, up the top, on the top left over here, it says you've got DJ Navarro slash new blog, like that's also the extension on the website over here. Um, so what that's saying is that this repository is owned by DJ Navarro, me, uh, and it's called new blog, which is an extremely boring name. Um, there's even a little website over there uh, that you can click on and you'll see that that's actually a working copy of the blog. In fact, let's prove it to ourselves so that we can at least get a sense of where we're going with this. So if we go over here, so DJ Navarro apparently has some blog and I would like to create a copy of this or create a variant of it that I'm going to use for some other purposes. Okay, so we've done that. The next thing we want to do is click on that use template uh, button and we're going to create, apparently Stringer Bell wants to create a blog about waffles, so I'm going to create it from template. So let's go back over to here, no, here, one of these things will do it, uh, I know what I need to do, the back button, classy. I'm, I'm really, really good at using stuff. Use this template, yeah that feels like the right answer, okay. So what did I say I was going to create? It's going to be a waffle blog. Waffle blog, um, and it will be, I'll give it a little description that says it is a blog about waffles, because, you know, 
Stringer Bell is imaginative that way. Okay, so create repository from template. Do, 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 do. We wait for a moment. We do things. Come on. It should only take a few seconds, but of course, when you're recording stuff, that feels like a lifetime. Okay, so now Stringer Bell has her own copy of uh, this blog. And you can see the new address here is github.com uh, Stringer Bell slash waffle blog. Um, it doesn't have its own website yet. We will come to that. Um, but it's indicated over here that yes, it was created from DJ Navarro new blog, but that's um, not super important to us right now. But it looks like we have a whole bunch of files. Cool, I should be able to do something with them. And it looks like some of these, oh, look at that dot R proj or that dot R. This looks like there's some R files in here. So maybe we would want to do something with R. Okay, well, let's just hope my tutorial tells me what to do. Okay. So if I want to do that, right, what I want to be able, what I want to do is take this repository, this set of code, all of these things, files, whatever it is that Danielle has left on, on there, and I want to just import that straight into RStudio Cloud and create my own RStudio Cloud project that begins from these files. So I click on the clone or download button, grab the URL there, um, and then I just go over to RStudio Cloud, and instead of clicking on the new project button, I click on the down arrow and then say, hey, create a new project from Git repo. All right, that sounds reasonably easy. Can I do this? So we go over here, grab that, copy that, go over to RStudio Cloud, where I happen, just so happen, to be logged in a Stringer Bell. So Stringer Bell kind of goes over here and goes, oh cool, new project from Git repo. I can paste and creating project, preparing project, deploying project. This takes a little bit longer. And again, it feels like it's forever because uh, when you're recording things and you are waiting, waiting is the worst. Traditionally, at this point, I start singing songs, and I am not going to do that. I refuse. I refuse. Um, I can't. I can't survive this. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. So we have something that looks suspiciously like an R Studio Cloud project, right? Just like the ones that we've used elsewhere. So, yep, R version 3.6.0. I'll do Control L to clear the screen. We can look over here on the bottom and say, oh, yep, there's our, um, uh, all of these files look like they're the exact same ones that we had on the Git repository. I can even go over here and call it Waffle Blog because I'm like that. I like to give things names. Okay, so, all right, so far so good. It looks like we have created a whole new RStudio Cloud project from uh, a GitHub repository. And we've done this using an entirely new account, using Stringer Bell. Cool. All right, we must be getting somewhere. Um, so what's next in our little list of things to do? Um, we need to go back over here. Okay. So we've, yep, done that. Clicked on the new project from repo. We did that. And, oh, apparently it's time to celebrate and have cake. Yay. All right, so I'll stop here let you do that yourself um, and hopefully you can come back to the next one uh, with a working copy of um, this repository open in our studio okay done you can go i don't know how to turn this off yes i do wait a minute